Hey guys, my name is Troy. Welcome to Facility D20. You might hear my printer running in the background because, man, I got something on there now that's pushing the limits. You're going to want to stick around to see if this thing even turns out. So, ever since I got my Anycubic Photon, it's been lemony snickets around here, guys. I cannot get this thing to print. I didn't know what was going on, but I ran into three major problems. I'm going to talk about those three problems and what I did to overcome them. So, the first problem that I had is that my Anycubic Photon has the new software and it doesn't recognize the Photon files. So, I was slicing everything in Chi2Box. And the problem was Chi2Box was saving it as a Photon file but I need a .pws file. So what I had to do was I had to download the Photon Slicer program and then upload my models into that and then slice them and then save them as a .pws. And once I did that, they were able to show up on my printer. So the second problem that I was dealing with was a bed leveling issue. Now because of that, I was having a few things happen to me like when my parts would fail, it would stick to the tip. So I found a couple of tricks that could help when you're dealing with parts that stick to the tip. So one of the things you want to do is to spray some isopropyl alcohol on it or put a little bit of isopropyl alcohol in the vat and then gently rub the part from the bottom where it's stuck on and it'll pop off easily. And that way you don't have to really go at it with your, with your scraper to try to get it out of there. It's much more gentle around the tip. So of course, one of the things you're going to have to do is you're going to have to end up cleaning the tip. And you're going to have to end up cleaning the tip a lot, especially if you're sticking prints to it. So one thing that I found super helpful was to get some lint free cloths and just cut them up into little squares and that way you can clean your um, vat up without scratching or messing up your tip. So that's a good tip. Another thing that I found out was that if you use some good old PTFE dry lubricant spray and you put a little bit on a cloth and you just rub the tip with it, that'll help parts from sticking onto the tip as well. And finally, you can like butter the bottom of your build plate, either using a spatula, your scraper tool, or just like with protective gloves on, dipping your fingers in and just rubbing some resin to kind of get it going. So after going through the gamut a few times, I tried a couple of different methods to level my bed. I was doing the, you know, the good old paper method and then the Flint Lockwood method. It really works! No, the Flint Reed method. So I tried it the Flint Reed method. If that's something that you're interested in, hit subscribe because I am going to be doing a few bed leveling uh, videos in the future. So after doing those couple of leveling methods and doing it over and over and over and I couldn't figure why my prints were still failing and sticking to the tip and then I realized one night at about 12 a.m. in the morning. So first I had my printer here and I could not get my bed leveled and I was like why man like what's really going on here and then my dumb ass had an idea. Maybe it's not my bed that's not level. Maybe it's the shelf that's not level. So I brought it over here because I knew this bench was level and all of a sudden things were looking good and started to print. Once I moved my printer to a more stable location over here on the workbench behind me just at a shot, it started to print and it started to print really well and then I didn't have any more failed issues. Now the problem I was having was a little different it brings me into my third problem. I wasn't quite sure what this was at first and then after doing a little bit of research it turns out that it was probably exposure settings. So I started to slightly increase the exposure settings of each level and I went up by two seconds and each time I got a little closer and a little closer to print, printing properly. So finally I got some good results and I started to get some of these prints to turn out. Now it still hasn't been perfect, it still looks like some of these really really tawny supports aren't sticking. You can see here on these couple of comparisons at a 12 second exposure time and a 14 second exposure time, they're still not completely sticking. So the print that I got on the go now, I cranked it up one more second at 15 seconds and man, this one is pushing the limits of this printer. So hopefully this one comes out. I figured this was a good mini to test my exposure settings because there were so many supports. So once I had it sliced up, I loaded it into my printer and hit print. So according to my resin, the exposure time from the community chart is saying between like 8 and like 18 seconds. Right now I'm running at 15 
and I don't think this is printing. I'm not sure if it's the exposure settings or I gotta go back to the bed leveling issue, but like, I can tell that it's peeling from the bed. Yep, we've got a lot of failing going on. Looks like it's totally lifted from here. X is not printing at all, and then the support's printed, it's peeling off here. Just, just not good at all. The base looks like the only thing that printed. So it turns out we hit a bit of a snag. So I got my printer going again, and I did a couple of things to try to fix this. I think that we might actually have a fourth problem. So what I think is going on here is that the retraction settings are so fast, it is creating a really strong vacuum, which is ripping the parts off the build plate. I said, don't disturb you, I'm cleaning my room. So what I did is I went into Chi2 box and the Photon Slicer and I compared the settings and it turns out that the Photon Slicer is operating at three times the retraction speed as Chi2 box. So I did a couple of things here. The first thing I did is I really wanted to move away from the Photon Slicer into Chi2 box because the supports are just way better in Chi2 box. So what I did is I went in and I found that there was new firmware, I updated my printer's firmware, then I tested off a whole bunch of exposure test pieces. Once I figured out that around 11 seconds was my best exposure time, I went ahead and sliced it up using Chi2 box and loaded it in my printer and I got it going again now and I'm hoping that this time it's going to turn out. So here are the exposure test prints that I did. The top ones here is with the Photon Slicer and the bottom ones here is with the Chi2 box. These are the seconds that I let the layers expose for up here. And the second number is just how long I let it cure for in the wash and cure station because I was also testing out how long I should uh, cure these parts. So what you're looking for here in this is, the, is that the point here comes together and a sharp point that these words here are clear and legible and that it, there's negative spaces between these um, rectangles almost like they could kind of fit in here and that all these circles print up this side overall i'm not super happy with any of these exposure settings but i did some test pieces and for example if we look at this one at 16 seconds we'll look at an example of overexposure and you can see here it's overexposed because this here infinity symbol isn't coming together at a nice sharp point and a lot of this here rectangles are just fused right together However, one thing you'll note though is that more of the circles printed up the side and the end pieces printed a little better. If you compare that to our nine second one, you can see that I have less circles printed up the side here and some of these rectangles on the end are kind of fraying, but still I'm getting a lot of fusion of these rectangles and this isn't coming together at a perfect point either. I decided to go with uh, 11 as my exposure time. I still printed most of the circles here. These letters are fairly legible and this is decent here. But I also want to make sure that my tiny little supports are connecting. So I've lowered it down from 14 down to 11. So another thing when cleaning with Simple Green, it seems like I have to run it in the wash cycle a little longer because um, it's not quite getting all the excess resin off of here. So I found that once I pretty much doubled the time from what I thought, so instead of washing for like 15 minutes, I washed for a half hour, that it came out much, much, much cleaner. Hey, so as sure as shit wasn't giving up, it looks like we got a print here. So I'm going to take it out, bring it under, show you guys some close-up shots and see if these supports kind of work out properly with the new settings. I'm just happy that I got her going. I didn't know so you can see here this guy is like super supported and it looks like all the supports are connecting except for these tiny little ones again up here but I'm thinking that they probably just broke off due to suction force and they did their job because if they didn't do their job nothing would print like this wouldn't be able to print in midair so I think I'm going to call that a win with my settings and I'm going to move forward now with this printer like everything is cool and just start running off minis and hopefully have some success. I think I'm going to leave my settings like they are for now so let's get this guy cleaned up so I can show you what he looks like.
Here's the lich. He came out pretty good. I decided to print this one because he's got so much crazy stuff going on. I figured it was going to be a good test on the printer. And everything worked out perfectly. So I'm happy with them. I'm happy with my settings right now. I got a couple of more here that I printed too during this whole process. Uh, these come out pretty nice. I've got some awesome videos on my channel here for some 3D printed miniatures that I did a while back for 40k. I want you to check those out and hit subscribe. Make sure you leave a comment and tell me what you think if you have any problems like this with your resin printer. And stick around because we've got some pretty cool Space Marines that I'm going to print coming up. So I'm looking forward to that.